It's still summertime, and I want to show you how to make characters swim in the water. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Ali, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this surfer character swim in the water, bring the whole scene to life. The cool thing about this video is that you're going to learn a lot of techniques from creating custom masks to enhancing your scene to make it look better and more realistic. And before we dive deeper into this, I've got an example that I want to share with you. Let's have a watch and then come back to start creating. I hope you liked the example. Now it's time to start creating and have fun bringing this scene to life. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll show you how to animate the water and then we will dive deeper into showing you how to use some other cool effects to enhance your scene and make it look better and realistic. And I want to mention that this background is going to be available in my Google Drive folder. You can simply just click on the link in the description below and you can download the image and start following along and make sure that you're going to achieve the same exact effect. Once you have it there, just import it into your project and then drop it into your timeline. And then we're going to extend the background in the timeline for about 15 seconds. If we need to make an adjustment, then we can always do that on the go. So number one is having this background on the canvas. And the first thing we're going to do is creating a duplicate of our background by having it selected. Then we're going to hit the control D or command D to make a duplicate. And now it is time for us to start creating a custom mask using the pen tool. So we're going to go to the plus sign that shows on the top left right next to the left panel to open up this small panel where we can grab text, pen tool, rectangle shapes, and all of those other shapes. But the one that we're going to use is the pen tool. You can also use a shortcut by hitting the shift and the letter P to activate the pen tool. So I'm going to activate it right there. And then it's time for me to draw a custom mask around the water to create my mask. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by clicking with my mouse to create my dots around the water edges like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we will take care of that once we're done creating the top edge of the water. And once we're done, I'll show you how to make adjustments to the to your uh, mask. So basically what you want to do is add dots on the top edge of the water just like this. And once you have added all of those, you can simply just double click between each two dots like this to make your lines or path lines more curved like that. And then you can adjust your curve angle the way you want to make sure that the mask is simply lined up with your image exactly how you want. And that's what's cool about the pen tool is that you can really draw your custom path exactly how we want and make sure that it fits perfectly the way you want it. And that's what I love about it. So let's just continue to make sure that we double click between each two dots to create a curved line. And then we're able to adjust its curved angle, make sure that it's a fit on each one of those. And then once we're done, we could just continue to create our mask. And I'm going to show you how to connect the shape and make sure that we have a full image that covers the water in the background. So once we're done, we're good to go. Now you want to make sure that you click on the last dot that you created by selecting it on the canvas right there. And then you're going to have to add a vertical line to the bottom of the image right there. Then you're going to add another one onto the left side of the image right there. Make sure it is uh, perfectly lined up. And then what you want to do next is look above the timeline on the right side. There's going to be two buttons, one that says exit the pen tool and the other one says connect shape. This is the one that you're going to use. You can click, you're going to click on connect shape right there. And now we have our custom shape drawn exactly how we want. The next thing we want to do is we're going to take the borders off and that's very important. So we have to have this selected, go to settings and then take the borders off and make it zero pixels because we don't need that. And then you're going to uh, select your mask layer along with your duplicated uh, image. You're going to right click on that and then choose mask summer beach with path. And now we have a mask created. If I remove the background, you're going to see that we only have the uh, water image on the canvas. Next, we're going to need to feather the edges of the water so it's not sharp and make it look more smooth. How? We can simply just go to the effects and components um, icon right there on the left side. And then under effects, we're going to scroll down until we find the edge feather. We grab and drop this one on our duplicated image, which is the water mask we created right there. 
and then we're going to change the feather strength on the top right from the small panel right there from 2% to 21%. Now we're going to have a much smoother edges of the water. So when we animate it, it's still going to look natural. The next thing we want to do is start by animating the water. And so we're going to grab the wave effect and drop that one on top of the duplicated image which is the math we created right there and now we will be able to see the panel on the top right where it shows us the settings that we can make adjustments to so we can simply start by clicking on the uh, start button to show or to preview what the um, mask looks like and then we can start by adjusting the settings so the first thing we're going to do is adjust the width from 20 percent to 100 and then we're going to adjust the height to two percent and then the next one is going to be the direction. We're going to change that from zero angle or zero degrees to 90 degrees. And then as far as speed, we're going to change that to make it 3%. That's how we can animate the water and make it look more smooth, nice and easy. Once we're done with that, next is we want to grab our uh, surfer character. So we're going to go to our studio and then we will open our characters and then we will open the drop down menu, click 3D in the search bar, we're gonna type in surfer and then we can just drag and drop this guy over here. The next thing we wanna do is change his action from waving to diving. So we're gonna click on the action button on the character's track and we're going to change that from wave to diving right there and you can see he has he has a starting point or starting animation where he starts by posing looking at the camera then he's going to start by jumping into the water and swim but in our case here we want to have him start diving or swimming from the very beginning until the end and the way to eliminate that is very easy we can simply right click on the diving button on the character's track and then we can disable starting animation that way the character is going to start by diving from the very beginning until the end next we're going to extend the action so we're going to hover over the little square on the end of the character's track drag this all the way until the end and then we can just drag this character maybe we can make him a little smaller if we want to like this and then we can just position him on the left side outside the canvas right there and then we can start by creating animation using keyframes so we're going to click on the add animation button above the timeline we're going to use position easing is going to be linear for both in and out then i'm going to drag my second keyframe all the way until the end of the track make sure it's still selected and then i'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and simply drag the character all the way to the right side outside my scene then i'm going to go back and then show you what that looks like there you go he is now swimming in the water but obviously this is so funny to look at him this way this is where we create our mask to make this look more natural and smooth so now that we got this covered, now it's time for us to start creating a mask for this guy. So we're going to add a rectangle shape by simply hitting the shift key and the letter R to grab a rectangle. Then we're going to drop this rectangle or drag it to the bottom just like this. And then we want to make sure that we scale it down from the top like that. It doesn't need to be really uh, wide but we could just keep it to something like this. And it's important to make sure that we grab it from the sideways, hold the Alt key and drag it like this to make it really wide. And it goes beyond the canvas like that so that we can make it more wavy and it covers the entire canvas from start to finish. Next, what we want to do is grab the uh, wave effect and drop it onto the rectangle. So we're going to go back into the effects and components tab. And then we're going to slide to the very bottom and then drag the wave effect onto the rectangle shape right there. We can also click on the start to preview what that looks like. And then it's time for us to make changes. So we're gonna change the width from 20 to 100%, same thing. So it's gonna be the same exact settings we had for the water mask. The next thing we wanna do is change the height from two, 5% to 2%. And then the angle is going to be from zero to 90 degree. Uh, speed is going to be 3% like that. And there you go. Now we can see there's a little bit of movement. I mean, you can recognize it if you are working with this on your canvas and you make a zoom, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of movements because that's how we wanted it to be. Make it really slow and it looks smooth and nice. Once we're done, we want to make uh, we want to create some edge feather to this as well. So we're going to drag the edge feather onto the rectangle to just so that we don't keep it sharp. And then we can go into the settings and then adjust that to 20 percent as well like that and now you can see that the edges are feathered which makes it look more smoother seamless and and easier to work with next 
We're going to make sure that we drag this guy to the very beginning of the track and line this up all the way until the end. Why? Because this one is going to be a track mat. It's not going to be the standard mask that, that we used previously. So that's the reason why we have to keep it on the timeline and lined up with the rest of the layers. Then it's time for you to make adjustments to the position of it, depending on how much do you want to uh, show from the character. But I think this looks fine until now. The next thing we're going to do is rename the layer. So we're going to right click the rectangle shape, rename it, and then call this surfer uh, mask. And then next we click on the character, we go to settings and then find where it says track mat, click that and then open up the drop down menu. And then we're going to choose surfer mask. And then we can simply just change the type from Luma to Alpha. And now we can see our character. If we go back to the very beginning and press play, this is how it's going to look like. So it seems that there's so much showing up from the character. So we can easily make adjustments. And that's the cool thing about the track mat is that you have a separate layer or the mask layer is still available in the timeline that allows you to make changes to it. So we can simply just drag this down up a little like this to hide you know, a little bit more of the character like that. So he looks like he's actually in the water and not really swimming on the surface of the water with his full body appearing like this. Now we're going to go back and then press play and have a look one more time. And you can see how nice and easy this looks like. And it's so smooth and it's definitely realistic than how it used to be when it was funny. Next, we're going to change the swimsuit for this character. So what we're going to do is we go back into the effects and components tab we're going to grab the color replace and drop that onto the character then we can see the right panel that shows us the settings that we can adjust so we're going to click on the where it says add color to replace and then these are the settings so the first thing we're going to change the choose the older color by clicking on the color settings then click the color picker and from there we can just choose you know one of the blue colors available on the swimsuit for him and then go back and click um, outside the window like this and then we can see the rest of the settings next we're going to adjust the second color so depending on how or what color do you want to choose it's really up to you for me i'm going to choose purple so i'm going to open up the color settings for the new one and change this to the purple color you can see the first thing it does it changes it to red that's fine but we will change the tolerance and increase that until we can see it purple like this you don't want to exaggerate the settings you just try and you know play with the tolerance uh, carefully while making adjustments until it covers the entire swimsuit and that's it because if you go further than that or go crazy with the settings uh, it might mess up the entire character image or video and you're going to end up with a bad experience so you don't want to have you don't want to do this now we're all done so we just go back to the very beginning of the timeline and press play and show you what that looks like then we can have fun and yeah this is beautiful i love this CS is very powerful that allows you to bring a whole lot scene to life using all of these effects. It's just a matter of you learning how to use it properly and then you're good to go. So all it takes is just practicing to get better at it. I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Me